Building the best app for web and mobile with React is like the holy grail of universal app development. Next.js might be the best for web with React, however, there's no native outcome. On the other hand, we have Expo, which is probably the best for React native applications, however, Expo for the web is not at the same standard like Next.js. So how can developers get the best of web and native with React? That's what this video is all about. In this video, I will share three different approaches with you. I will give you a brief overview of how they work, how the internals work, and also what the pros and cons for each of these approaches might be. In the end, I will also share some guidelines how you can figure out and determine the best stack for your next React native universal application. So stick around until the end and make sure you hit the subscribe button right now so you don't miss any future videos. All right, let's figure out ways how you can build the best native and web experience for your users without killing yourself in the process. Okay, so the first approach is the T3 stack. T3 was made uh, popular by Theo. I actually had a podcast with him. I will link to it below this video so you can check out all Theo had to say about this. So the T3 stack is just a Next.js project. However, there's now also the T3 Turbo stack, which also includes a React native application using Expo. And this stack is quite interesting. So you can create an application uh, with one command, which will check out everything, or you can also use uh, this button here, use as template. Of course, I run this and here we go. This is my local application. So the T3 Turbo stack includes everything you need for a universal application. Basically, this is how it works. You have this mono repository setup, which can actually be uh, a bit scary to some people, but I'm gonna talk more about that in the end. And you basically have different apps in here. So uh, the auth proxy, let's not talk about it too much. Uh, it's for authentication right now, but we're interested in, in the other two. So you actually have a real Next.js and a real Expo project in here, and they can share some code. So you have different packages then, or you have a folder here for tooling. So on the packages, we have the API stuff, we have the authentication stuff, the DB, which is using Drizzle, uh, and some UI components that can be shared. And both of our app uh, applications in here can access the packages in here. So you got a bit of code reuse, especially in terms of the logic and working with the API. This is using a planet scale database. So I actually deployed this and gave it a try. It looks like this once you run the Next.js application. And it also looks like this uh, on the native side using Expo applications. Now, um, this deck comes with some learning, I would say. There are a lot of tools included in this stack. Um, uh, starting with the Mono repository setup, PNPM scripts and how the whole folder structure looks. And then it continues with uh, using TRPC, Drizzle and uh, database configuration, authentication, <laughs> really there's a lot to it. However, as a result, you have all your code in one place in here. So the pros for this are definitely that this is using the best in class technology. Um, the T3 stack is based on a lot of great tools and T3 Turbo is just an additional mono repository with uh, the Expo application included now. To make these apps look similar, what is used is uh, Tailwind CSS on the web and on the native counterpart, this is actually also Tailwind. It's using native wind, but native wind is um, basically the same as Tailwind using the same name. So you don't really have to use or learn any new styling stuff, which gives kind of similar outfits. So this is definitely another pro. One of the cons is that you don't really have a whole lot of code sharing beyond the logic. Now. This might not be a problem. I will just list out the pros and cons for all of these approaches and in the end we come back to them. But keep that in mind. So if you check out the Expo application, you're gonna see it's a pretty standard application. We have our index page, uh, which uses the standard view and link and pressable and text components that you're used to. And it's using native Wind for the styling. But if you then go to the Next.js application, source, app, uh, whatever, let's use the first page, you're gonna see standard web stuff in here, postcard, skeleton, suspense, post list, whatever. So you, you don't really have a lot of, or basically none code share, uh, of UI components, probably beyond some of the like components that are shared. And on the downside of this, it's definitely a complicated setup to get started. There's like a whole readme 
uh, that I've been through uh, to figure out how that stuff works and how I can configure it in the first place. It's still not working fully because I haven't uh, configured the Discord URL properly, so uh, I can't really load or create any post right now. Uh, it's usually throwing me an error. I gave my best, but it wasn't possible yet. However, uh, I guess with like 10 more minutes, I could probably have sign in with Discord working. Uh, yeah, right now I haven't figured that out correctly, but that's one of the downsides. It's a mono repository. It looks different to your usual projects. Um, there's a bit of a learning curve involved uh, in how all of these things play together and it can definitely look scary in the beginning. The second approach I want to show you is based on Tamagui, although you could actually argue that you could also do this in a different way, but I'm going to use Tamagui as it has a great starter. So with npm create Tamagui, you can create a project that's actually similar to what we've seen before. Tamagui projects here are also mono repositories. You see the same setup. Uh, we have the apps, we now have Expo and Next. We have packages and under packages we have a UI package where we actually share a lot more than we did in the previous T3 Turbo stack. So what is Tamagui? I have a full course on using Tamagui in Galaxies. Check that out if you're interested. Um, it is basically a set of components, but also a whole UI system. There's a compiler behind it. There's a lot more about Tamagui than uh, meets the eye in the first place. And we definitely have to talk more about this in the future. There's also a takeout, which is a great starter kit that includes everything beyond the stuff that I will show you in the free basic repository. But how does Tamagui work? Well, within Tamagui apps, our application code will look slightly different. So what's different this time is if we go to our app uh, right here, we're going to see there's not a lot here in my index page. That's just a home screen. And you're going to see the same picture if you move into the next application. So under next uh, pages index, we're going to see same setup. There's just a home screen. So this is the cool thing about Tamagui and how this starter works. They both point to this one screen, which is actually in the packages folder. So it is shared in our mono repository and we see it's under app features home. And there is the actual implementation of a screen. So how does all of this work? Well, in here, we're going to see Tamagui. It looks like some of these are actually deprecated. That's interesting. But basically, our web and native project are displaying the th same things. So on the web, uh, I can click this and whatever, go to Nate, and I can even open this cool uh, model from the bottom. Same here on my mobile app. Uh, I can do the same. I should be able to, yeah, go there. And you see, now I'm making actually use of the native components in here. Same, I can now change this. So uh, let me put this somewhere else. I will say, welcome to galaxies, hit save. And at the same time, we see changed here and changed here. So this is a great setup for pretty much all universal applications if you're cool with using Tamagui. So as you can see in this project, we are completely reusing our view code. Both Next and Expo application point to the same home screen file. And it's the same for other pages in that application as well. So you get like the most code share. And because Tamagui has for these components, like whatever, like an anchor or a button, an implementation for both native and web, it's not like you're getting a janky web button on uh, mobile or you're getting like a mobile looking button on the web. No, you actually get the best of those platforms in different places. And that's true for many more components that are used within Tamagui. This of course also makes it really easy to keep your UI design system in place. So if you're a bigger company, you usually have some sort of style guide or UI system and you can easily tweak this with Tamagui. There's a lot about the compiler, the config and themes. I explored this in the Galaxy scores. The documentations are not yet great, Nate knows about this, but uh, with Tamagui you can really build impressive things. And with this approach of the Mono Repository, we share all those things completely almost 100% between web and native. On the downside, we still have the mono repository approach. So if you're not cool with using Turbo Repo or mono repositories in general and how they work, you might have some problems here. Additionally, you are kind of bound to Tamagui with this example. Yeah, you could probably argue that you can do this in a different way, uh, but you're bound to Tamagui and also how Tamagui uses the routing. So if you check out the actual home screen, you're going to notice that how is routing the same for web and native? Well, this is done by using Solito, which 
kind of just unifies routing under this use link for both React Native and uh, Next.js projects. I also had Fernando Rojo on the Galaxy's uh, podcast, so I will link to that one as well below if you want to learn more about how Solito and the other components work. But this basically unifies routing, which can be both good or bad. So let's talk again about this in the end. The third approach I want to show you is just using Expo Router, which sounds kind of strange, but it is possible. So hear me out. If you're using Expo Router, you get file-based routing and whatnot, and you also actually get web support with Expo Web. So is this great? Well, you can decide for yourself. The outcome looks somewhat like this. Um, here's an application I built for one of my workshops. So basically, we have this cool application that works great on native, of course. We have like tap stuff and uh, we can also have a draw menu to the side. So everything you would expect. And in the same project, this is also rendered to a web uh, version. So I can go to an about page, I can go to a disclaimer page, and I can also open my drawer and implement my own stuff, so my own layout. This works by having different switches in your code like this. So if the platform is web, uh, I render a slot in here, or for example, in the, uh, this is the draw layout. Uh, if the platform is web, I actually have some HTML code in here. Yes, this is a React Native project, but we can still have HTML code. This is not a Mono repository setup. This is just a standard React Native Expo application. And we can still get like different outcomes for web and native by using different extensions. So you can use like something.web or something.native. So in this case, for the home page, I have different definitions. On native side, we have the usual view stuff that you would expect from a React Native application. But for the web, we're actually rendering a head tag, we have some meta information, and we have diff and just standard React code for the web. So the pros of this approach are definitely the ease of using this. This is just Expo and it makes it really, really easy to combine both web and native. On top of that, since Expo Router version 3, we also have API routes. I haven't included them in the project, but you can easily add API routes, which then also share code with the other apps uh, that you include in here. And beyond that, it's pretty great to have your web and native code really, really close together. So I don't have to like switch between different levels and packages. And I can either use the same stuff for the UI or I can, as we've seen, drop down into like platform switches or have different files for web and native. However, there are of course downsides to this. So with Expo Web, the experience is just not like Next.js for the web. So if you come from Next.js, there are definitely things that won't work like on the web. I'm not a Next.js expert, but there's a reason why Next.js is that popular. And with Expo Web, the Expo team is definitely not possible to like clone the experience of Next.js, nor do they want. They really want to focus on building a great native app, but also enabling you to build universal apps with stuff like API routes and also making HTML and CSS work in React Native project. Beyond that, Expo Router is still kind of not experimental, like it is stable and you can use it, but there's a version 4 planned and also after that version 4, they're going to probably rename this and strip out things. You can uh, learn more about this in the podcast episode I had with Evan Bacon, the creator of Expo Router. It's definitely interesting what they're going to see, but you have to like like the adventure and be a bit uh, adventurous to use Expo Router for a complete project uh, in production. But nonetheless, it is possible. And one great example is actually the blog from Evan Bacon, who is using Expo completely for web and native. You can check it out on GitHub. I will also put a link below in the description with a great example of the code he used, basically doc fooding everything from Expo Router in his own project. All right, at this point, I'm pretty sure many of you are screaming, Simon, but what about Capacitor? Yes, we definitely have to mention Capacitor here. So Capacitor is basically a drop-in solution for pretty much every project to enable you and build a native application. With Capacitor, you get like the iOS and the Android stuff and the platforms, and you can share basically 100% of your code. You could add Capacitor to any React app, you could add it to an XJS application, or you could use the Ionic framework, which is providing UI components that resemble native UI controls. And then you can have like 99% code share between web and native applications on iOS and Android. This is great, but 
the experience on native is not at the same level as React Native, simply because React Native will render to native controls, whereas Capacitor is using a web view to display your stuff and is using like CSS animations for like page transitions. This is not to say Capacitor or Ionic is bad by any means, it's a great choice for many projects, but in the scope of having the best experience for web and the best experience for native, it is lacking a bit behind in the best for native. I just wanted to include it as an option so you know about the different ways how you can go for a native app. All right, what is the best way to build a universal React app in 2024? Apparently, it still depends. The funny thing is some things are actually good and bad at the same time. For example, the sharing of your UI code. This could be good or bad depending on what you prefer. Do you want to have web and native look the same? Then the sharing is great. Do you want to have separate views? In that case, sharing wouldn't be a good option. So to give you some concrete ideas, these are my recommendations for the moment. If you want to get the most out of the web platform and the most out of the native platform without caring too much about UI code sharing, then the T3 Turbo Stack is definitely one you want to use. It's using best in class tools, libraries, packages, the Mono repository setup, everything is really up to the latest standards and you're gonna get great results on both ends. If you wanna mostly share your iCode and have the same structure for your web and your native application, then I would recommend that you try out Tamagui and the Mono repository setup. By using Tamagui, you make it really easy to have great UI on web and native. Solito unifies the routing so you can have like the same URLs and universal links on web and native and you can share a lot of the code between the different views on the different platforms. If you have a small team and you wanna share the most of the code between web and native, and probably the native application is even more important and the web is just like, yeah, we still need that for some customers, then I would recommend give Expo Router a try. You can get API routes, uh, you can get different layouts and use HTML and CSS for the web if you want. It has not the same features like Next.js, but therefore it's a lot easier to start, it's a lot easier to maintain, and you can do this really with a very small team of like just one person actually. So we have some really, really great options here in 2024, and Expo is working on more stuff as I've talked with Evan, and I'm really like, it's going to be a great year, and I'm excited to see what will come later down this year. What are your preferences for building a universal React app right now in 2024? Let me know in the comments and also let me know if you want to see a deep dive into one of the approaches presented in this video and I will make it happen in the future. And also if you're interested in some more tech stack recommendations, I did a full video on what I would use in 2024 and pin it up here. So go check that out and here's another video that YouTube also recommends for you. So check those out, stay subscribed and I will catch you in the next one. And until then, of course, happy coding, Simon. <laughs>